So we've done sigma-only interactions in coordination complexes. Let's talk about pi interactions. And the reason is because ligands can be different types. So we talked about sigma-only. And that interaction is if we have a lone pair donating to the metal. Sigma-only, again, because it's uh, symmetric, cylindrically, about this ligand-metal bond. Um, and so this is, so ligands that can only do sigma bonding are when you have no pi symmetry orbitals, whether they're filled or unfilled. Um, or I guess if you have them, that they're not of the appropriate energy to interact with the orbitals on the metal. So for example, sigma only ligands could be, let's say, a hydride, ammonia, right? Ammonia has its own pair. Hydride also has a lone pair because you have an extra electron. Or let's say a methyl. Um, so, right, these are X type, type, ammonia's L type because it's neutral, and then methyl is an X type. Hydro is obvious because it has no pi symmetry orbitals that are filled either way. Uh, you know, you have your 1s2, and ammonia has that only that lone pair. Um, our sigma bonding orbitals, et cetera, et cetera, from between the nitrogen and the hydrogens are uh, too low in energy to interact. And same for methyl, so it's sigma only. So we could also have pi acceptors. Pi acceptors. And this is when you have empty, so it has to be empty, low line, so low in energy that they're appropriate enough to interact with the d orbital um, of the metal in energy pi symmetry orbitals. And so one really common example of a pi acceptor is the carbonyl ligand. So the carbonyl ligand has CO triple bond. So the carbonyl ligand does have a sigma interaction. So there's a sigma donation into the metal. But the carbonyl ligand also has pi star orbitals. So here's the pi star, the CO pi star rather. This is the pi star. And then so when you have your metal, d orbital, so let's say this is a dxz. So this is empty, this empty pi star. So we can get what's called back bonding, when we go from a filled d orbital, so filled d orbital into this empty pi star. So this is a pi interaction, and that's why it's called pi acceptor, and then this is called back bonding. So back bonding because it's going from the metal to the ligand as opposed to, I guess, more normal front bonding, which is from the ligand to the metal. Front bonding is not a term, by the way. OK, that's pi acceptor. We could also have pi donors. And then here is we have filled pi symmetry orbitals. These are often lone pairs. And then so in this scenario, if we have our ligand, so again, we could also, we have sigma bonding to the metal, which I won't draw here. But then when we have our filled pi symmetry orbital, which I'll just draw as a p orbital. So again, this is filled. And then this can then donate into the empty d orbital of a metal. So this is not back bonding because we're going from ligand to metal like normal. Um, so examples, I, I gave examples of sigma only uh, ligands. Good pi acceptors would be CO. Um, in this case, phosphines can also be pi acceptors. We did that example on the problem set. So the PF sigma star is of pi symmetry to the metal and is empty. So then it can accept electron density. Other ones are CN minus. So this CN minus also has a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen and therefore has an empty pi star. And then for pi donors, um, any halides, so X minus, right, you have chlorides, iodides, bromides, et cetera. They, these have filled lone pairs, and then these can then donate pi symmetries. Any other lone pair, let's say, if we have, let's say, alkoxides, for example, or maybe oxides. So things with filled lone pairs, these can be pi donors. OK, and let's talk a little bit about bonding. So. When we do that, let's, let's first talk about the socks, and then we'll generate our, our MO diagram. Um, I'm going to quickly erase, and then we'll start doing that.
OK, great. If we consider an octahedral compound, so here's my metal, and here's octahedral, we've done sigma only. So the sigma only axes are, of course, down the bond. So those are done, and then we've already done those. Those are EG, T2G. So the pi symmetry orbitals would always be sort of perpendicular to that. And so without derivation, um, you guys could do that on your own. But if you think about our reducible representation for our 12 pi symmetry orbitals, this should uh, reduce down to T1G plus T2G uh, plus T1U plus T2U. So uh, you should be able to generate sulks of all the pi symmetry orbitals of our ligands. Um, so these are all that, those. But the key point is that if you think about interactions with our metal, the only one that matters for the d orbitals are the T2G. Because you have an octahedral, our d orbitals are EG, T2G. Um, and then, so remember that previously for sigma only, our d orbital splitting pattern was like so. EG star, remember so this was ML sigma star. And then we had our T2G, um, and this was ML non-bonding. So, and then remember this was our delta O. So when we think, want to think about pi interactions, now we have to add on these pi symmetry orbitals, T1G, T2G, T1U, and T2U. The T2U can interact with our p orbitals, but if we just look at the d orbital splitting, all we care about is T2G. So now there can be interaction with the T2G which was previously non-bonding. So the nature of that interaction depends on whether your ligand is a pi acceptor or a pi donor. So let's suppose that we're looking at pi donors. So the key point of pi, pi donors is that they're filled pi symmetry orbitals. Orbitals. OK. So when we think about where those filled orbitals are, um, so they're the lone pairs. Let's say we have a halide ligand. The lone pairs of the halide ligands should be the same energy as the sigma donating lone pairs, which means that they're going to be below the energy of the d orbitals of the metal because um, the ligands are more electronegative than the transition metals. So that means that our 12 pi symmetry orbitals, which are, of course, all filled, these are our 12 L pi. They're low in energy. So that means that we will form bonding, antibonding interactions. These go down. So here's our fill T1U. Oh, it's, it's, it's off screen, but here's my fill T1U. I'm oh, sorry, T2G, rather. T2G. The T1U is also there. There's fill, so that's our ligand centered orbital. But what that means is that we form bonding. This is lower. That's the bonding ligand centered. The metal centered orbitals must therefore be anti bonding. So then this will have to go up. And this becomes T2G star. This becomes ML pi star, right? This was ML pi over here. And then our EG star, since the pi orbitals of the ligands don't have an EG sulk, there's no change. So this will remain up here. So therefore, EG star, ML sigma star. To point out, the T2G never crosses over with the EG orbitals because the sigma interaction, like we talked about before, is always stronger than the pi interactions because there's better overlap in the sigma uh, nature compared to the pi. Right? We have parallel pi orbitals or pi symmetry orbitals. The less overlap, this antibonding is less. But the key point is here, delta O. So for pi donors, delta O is smaller. And this is because our T2G goes up in energy. In comparison, if we think about where our pi acceptors, let me do that in blue. So pi acceptors, empty pi symmetry orbitals. So these empty pi symmetry orbitals, like in CO, are empty pi stars. So they are usually higher energy. So we have our filled 
orbitals here, and then we have antibody orbitals on the ligands up here. They're going to be higher in energy than our d orbitals, so they're going to be up here. So when I say they're low-lying, they're still close enough in energy to the d orbitals, but they're still going to be higher. Remember, these are empty. And again, we have a T2G in here, as well as the T1G, T1U, T2U. So when we interact this T2G in our, um, in our 12 ligand pi stars here, when we interact these, these, again, will have bonding, antibonding, but the bonding ones will now be closer in energy to the metal. So they'll be more metal-centered, while these ones that are antibonding go up. So this will form our T2G from a metal, it goes down. So then this T2G becomes metal ligand pi bonding. So pi bonding. And then these T2G goes up. So this goes up. And again, the EG stays in the same energy. Oh, sorry, let me. Okay. There we go. This is our EG. Remember, this is still ML sigma star. So overall, what happens for a pi acceptor ligand is that delta O is bigger. And this is because the T2G is pi bonding, so it goes down in energy. Here, the T2G is, for pi, except for pi donors, is anti-bonding, so it goes up in energy. So this is why it's important to distinguish between a pi acceptor versus a pi donor, because it changes our final delta O. OK, great. So we'll talk about what that means in the next video.